How's it going, LEGO fans? David here today, and I'm back with another Pick a Brick Cup video. Today, we're going to do something a bit interesting because, as you can see, I have a pitcher halfway full of water. I've got some cling wrap, sponsored by Glad, and also a scale, and my calculator again, and some sticky notes. What are we going to do today? Well, glad you asked, because today, we are going to be measuring the volume of the actual pick a brick cups. We're gonna measure the volume in weight, and when we have that, we will be able to then determine what the difference is of the volume based on the price. So let's get right into today's video. All right, so to find the difference in volume based on the type of cup, we first need to weigh the cups and the lids separately, so we don't need we don't need those we don't don't need those pieces anymore. So now that we have all of the bricks out of the way, we are going to put the small cup on top of our scale here, and then turn it on, which essentially equalizes the the scale here. So this doesn't count as weight, and this would be considered negative weight. So it weighs about 1.4 ounces. And now we're going to fill this small cup. Hopefully it doesn't have any leaks in it. I checked before, but hopefully it doesn't have any leaks. We're gonna fill it up with water. And then due to the surface tension, we're gonna to have to flatten that a little bit. But before we dump this water on here, what we're going to do is use this cling wrap to make sure that if slash when water spills over the top of the cup, it won't damage the scale here. be a big enough piece. Wow, cling wrap that actually tore nicely. <laughs> right, we're gonna put that on here. That should keep it plenty. That should be good for this. So now the it's off and now we will turn turn it back on. And we have our scale ready. So now we're going to pour this water inside the cup here. Now we definitely have a little bit of surface tension here. So what I'm going to do next is get this piece of glass. Get this piece of glass here and lay it over top of, lay it over top of this to get rid of any surface tension so that when we later do the same thing with the large cup, we're really um, minimizing the amount of extra water that is in the cup. So, some water's gonna spill off of here. And I'm gonna slide this off. All right, so that's what our towel over here is for, to dry that off and put this away. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of all that ex excess water that was on that was on the, this plastic here. So we're going to take this off, move this to the side. Now we're going to take this towel dry that off and let me move it to the other side so now we have virtually no surface tension here so now with all the water removed from the cling wrap we now can put this back on and remember, we already equalized this scale so that the weight of the cup doesn't affect the, the scale. So we're only measuring the weight of the water here. So we are getting one pound and 1.2 ounces of water. So let's make a little chart over here. We have our, 
uh, small cup and then we have our large cup and then we are actually going to have one more which is the lid which is going to be the same for both the small and the large cup so the weight again is one pound 1.2 ounces one pound 1.2 ounces let me make that point a little bit one pound 1.2 ounces of water for the small cup now let's do the same thing for the large cup so we don't need this water anymore All right, don't need that anymore. Now let's do the large cup. Again, we're gonna put this on the scale and then turn it on so that we don't count the weight of the cup as part of our, our weight. And now let's pour in some water. No leaks, I don't think, so that's good. Hopefully I put enough water in this pitcher. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna go higher than the lid so I can see surface tension, visible surface tension. And now we're gonna get our piece of glass again. I got this from a picture frame. Smoosh that excess water off the top of the cup. That was a lot this time. Let's slide that off best we can. Dry that off here. <laughs> and like before, we gotta take we gotta take this off. Take out all that excess water. I may have to dry a little bit of the large cup here because it's got some water on the side. Let's try to dry all this off. All right, two pounds, two ounces. Two pounds, two pounds, two ounces. All right, now all we have to do next is the measure the lid. How much water fits in a lid? All right, got our cups down. Now let's pick a lid and measure the lid. All right, now to put this lid on and weigh the water of how much fits in a small cup. All right, zero ounces, here we go. This one I feel is going to have a lot of water left over. Oh no. That's a bit much. So before putting the glass on, I'm actually going to remove some of the water right now. Okay. Now let's put the glass on. Here we go. Actually, oh no, that's that's interesting. Huh. Not in enough water. I took out too much water with the towel. Let's try that again. Water on top. Now we've got some overflow, which is what we wanted. All right. Now the question is, can I move that lid in order to 
weigh it right without spilling any of it. So far, so good. Nice. All that practice with building Lego creations, right? <laughs> All right, dry off all of this extra water. Don't want any of that on top of our scale. Okay, time to put this back. So for those curious, this is 0.6 ounces, this lid. Okay, 4.8 ounces of water for the lid. Four point eight ounces. All right, now with all of that information, let's go to our next part. Now one thing that's immediately apparent is it seems that the large cup can hold almost twice as much as the small cup. But remember, it's not quite so because the lid has to be added 4.8 to both of the large and the small cup. So that means we're adding more proportionally anyways to the small cup than we are the large cup. So for the small cup, it's one pound, six ounces. And then for the large cup, it's two pounds, 6.8 ounces. So what's the difference between these two? Well, we have one pound, six ounces, and two pounds, 6.8 ounces. So what we have to do is take this number and multiply it by 16, and then multiply this number by nine. So why is that? Because to spend the equal amount of money of small cups and the equal amount of money of large cups, we have to buy $144 worth of small cups and $144 worth of large cups. And we get that by multiplying the small cup price, which is $9 by 16, and then the, the large cup is $16. So we multiply that by nine to uh, buy the same amount of each. So the easiest way to do that is to first convert all of these pounds into ounces. One pound, better one here, one pound equals 16 ounces. So for here we eat, really have 22, 22 ounces. And over here we have 38 ounces. So just to recap what we did so far, we got the amount of water that fits in a small cup, the amount of water that fits in a large cup, added those two by the lid and converted everything to ounces. So we have 22 ounces of water in a small cup and 38.8 ounces in a large cup. Now we're going to multiply those numbers by the number of cups you'd have to get in order to spend the same amount of money on small cups as you do large cups, which is $144. So that means you have to buy 16 small cups and nine large cups. So let's do that calculation. We have 22, 22 ounces times 16 cups. We get a total of 352 ounces. And then over here we have nine times 38 Point eight. 349 ounces. So our two numbers here, 352 ounces and 350 ounces, that's a really interesting number because from our, from the first pick a brick cup video, we noticed that the large cup ended up being a better investment of your money 
because you ended up getting more pieces from it. But when we look at the actual volume that you're getting, 352 versus 349, it's slightly lower with a large cup. Now, if we were able to be any more accurate with our measuring of uh, the water in our picker brick cups, it may be that these two are actually the same. But just from here, it looks like um, whoever designed the, the picker brick cups really did a good job with making sure the volume of each cup is the same. Now, because we've done another video where the large cup is usually a better value, at least with 2x4, 1x2, and 1x1 bricks, well, 2x4 is not really, but it was still a slight advantage, so we're just going to call it advantage. So, the large cup gives you a little bit better deal, and the one reason I can think of why has to do with the bottom of the cup here. You have a lot of area around the, the bottom of the cup where the lid, where the lid fits in, and that happens to be quite a bit more of that space between the edge of the cup and the top of that lid than it is for the large cup. So it seems that the annoying gap around the edge ends up making you able to fit less pieces. So this is that's a uh, very interesting find that we found there. So now you know what the difference is between large and small cups in terms of volume, which is essentially nothing in terms of when we calculate it out via the price. So, but just to finish this off, what is the percentage difference between between these two? So 352 divided by 349 and that is 1.0 zero eight five eight five nine five nine so maybe we'll just found this to um, eight six here so if this if this zero here on the end was a one that would be a one percent difference so it's maybe eight tenths of one percent difference so virtually no difference uh, like we already said between the small and large cup in terms of volume that you're getting for the price that you're paying for these cups so what did we learn here today is what we learned is that when looking at just the pure volume that fits inside a large and a small cup when looking at how expensive each cup is, there's virtually no difference in volume when you're looking at the numbers here. We have less than 1% difference of volume. As we can see here, if we spend $144, we're only getting a few more ounces of water that we're fitting with the small cup than the large cup. So when we're packing cups and we're putting in pieces, what we're really looking at is how much space is being wasted because of the differences of how the lids of picker brick cups fit into the bottom of the large and small cups. The difference is inside in the amount of space between the edge of the cup and the edge of the lid uh, indentation there. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this with other people who you think would benefit from this kind of information. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And now go build something.